Sprouts are said to be rich in digestible energy, bioavailable vitamins, minerals, proteins. And we're talking all about sprouting today on In the Know. I'm Julia Supo. Welcome to In the Know. You may remember growing sprouts as a kid, but did you know sprouts are really, really good for you? Joining us today to give us a crash course on sprouting is Kathy Nesbitt. Kathy, we know you as the worm lady. That's right. But Hi, now Julia. you're back as the sprouting lady. <laughs> Welcome back to In Thank the Know. You. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you look you, great. Julia. Thank you. It Thank must you. be I'm because excited of the to be here. Well, that's part of it for sure. <laughs> yes. So what is sprouting? I was telling my crew earlier today, we're talking about sprouting today, and they said, what, like planting? Mm. Um, and it's interesting that that's maybe what some people think about when you think about sprouting. What is sprouting? So sprouting really is the process of taking a bean or a seed and germinating it, so that for planting or for eating. But, but for our purposes, for the purpose of the show, um, sprouting is really... Um, this, the, the seed that's germinated and then you eat it when it's uh, just uh, come out of its shell. Okay, so mm -hmm. we, you brought an example and you're gonna, you brought us tons of stuff. I brought you lots but of stuff. But just so people have an idea of what they're looking at, so th these are sprouted mung beans? These are almost partially sprouted. That I'm going to talk about the challenge of sprouting in a jar. Okay. Why it's, it's, it, it doesn't sprout them uniform, but yeah. So when the seed, when the root is as long as the bean or the seed, that's when you eat it. That's when it's most nutritious. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why did you get into this, or how did you get into this? <laughs> well, how did I get into it? Well, it was the, in 2002, the year I started my worm business. I met Tony Hornick, the designer of the super simple sprouter that we'll be talking about uh, shortly. Um, He's a really great salesman, so everybody was walking around with this spaceship type thing, and I didn't know anything about sprouts or sprouting, and I asked him, you know, what is that? And he said, um, it's a sprout grower, and gave me the pitch about how healthy they are and nutritious. So he was 72 at the time, ballroom dancer, and um, I looked at him, I said, well, you look at you, super healthy and uh, vibrant, and so I said, I want what you have. And so, actually, it was right at that moment, um, I said, I'm going to do this. And he said, if you're going to start sprouting, eat sprouts, two uh, scoops of sprouts bef first thing in the morning to start your day. Um, it's the digestive enzyme that's the super important piece, prepares your body for the rest of the food you're going to take in. And so for 10 years, this was my private health plan. Tony said I should do this. I did, and I felt great. I had lots of energy, and I thought everybody knew what I knew. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. It's um, true. I would see Tony at all these events, and um, you know, I'd run over and say, "Hey, Tony, how you doing?" And say to the people, "You should get one of those." And it never occurred to me to start selling these until two years ago. Tony approached me at the Guelph Organic Show and said, um, "How would you like to sell this in conjunction with your worm business?" And I thought, oh my gosh, that'll be fantastic. It's got to be an easier sell than worms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not so much because really? people don't know. Yeah, people don't know about sprouts. And, you know, people say to me, um, I heard that sprouts are toxic. Well, and then I say, okay, well, how could sprouts be toxic when you take seeds and you add water? Right. That, where, where's the... Well, where does that myth come from? Well, it, it's, it's probably in something like this, where you're doing it in uh, jars. Of course, it can be toxic, and Tony's going to talk more about that later on. Tony will be on, yes, our special we guest. we do have Tony How here. Fun. Um, yeah, about, you know, it's the bacteria. This is super fresh food. As the seed of the bean germinates, everything's there to grow that plant, in, uh, the seed, into a little plant. Um, so it makes sense that to eat it at that stage is most nutritious. Right. Um, when you're sprouting, the color, the water changes color and it 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 gets all cloudy. You want to get rid of that. With Tony's sprout grower, it makes it really simple because the beans aren't sitting in the water. Right. And we'll we'll talk. You brought different sprout growers too. So. But you can tell it's kind of like a colander, right? So it's a beautiful, yeah, it's like a little greenhouse, a hydroponic greenhouse, and it works light or dark. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, and mm -hmm. again, we're going to talk about the different types of sprouts, but these are mung beans, you said? These are mung but beans. But you can sprout all different types of beans. All different types. All different types of beans are, can be sprouted. Um, the mung beans are the fastest germinating. Okay. So I know people at home are probably thinking, why is this nutritious? Mm. Why is it nutritious? Oh, again, Tony has a better answer for that. But everything 
in the seed of the bean is, is th there. It contains vitamins A to Z, hydrating, alkalizing, regenerative, biogenic, digestive enzyme, fiber, protein, minerals. Everything is in that seed that in, in, from nature. You know, if you're taking a multivitamin, hopefully there's some sort of green food in there. But it's highly processed, right? It's all manipulated, there's fillers, there's all kinds of stuff. And if somebody's taking a multivitamin and, it, and the capsule doesn't even open and it comes out the other end intact, <laughs> yeah. not to be crude, but they're just feeding the pharmaceutical. Yes. No benefits are not coming to their body. actually absorbed. Exactly. And, you know, so with, with when you're eating sprouts, you're chewing it. It's going in your body. So I said hydrating. So we're becoming dehydrated. We're mostly water. So they're juicy, delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, alkalizing uh, in an acidic body that's where disease can form right so um, eating alkalizing food is is beneficial yep. um, oh my gosh there's th there's so much to talk about with okay. uh, the, the nutrition and so you eat two handfuls every day more than that but I start my day because Tony told me to <laughs> <laughs> I do what I told when it's when it serves me um, so yeah I literally will take two scoops uh, two handfuls of sprouts and uh, and chew them slowly and and really think yum thank you for nourishing my body and I take that time to do kind of a a mindful meditation almost while I'm chewing and thinking how delicious this is and preparing my body Okay. Mm. All right. So later on in the show, we're going to talk about, and, and when we come back from break, we're going to talk about the different types of sprout growers. Okay. I want to remind everyone at home that Kathy is here and Tony's here as well. So if you have any questions, you can give us a call. We're here for the entire hour. If you have any questions about how to sprout, what exactly is sprouting, why you should be doing it, how to do it, because mm. we're going to talk about that too, because you sure. tell me and Tony tells me that it's easy. <laughs> and when you're busy, you need easy. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely you do. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. So don't go anywhere. We have to take a short break. When we come back, more with Kathy Nesbitt and Tony. We're talking all about sprouting today on In the Know. Welcome back to In The Know. I'm Julia Supa. We're talking all about sprouting today with Kathy Nesbitt. So sprouting, you brought uh, different types of sprout growers. Yes. Because that's what we're doing. We're growing sprouts. That's right. Exactly. Okay. And yes. we're not growing sprouts in the ground. Where do you grow the sprouts? So the, the sprouting that we're doing is hydroponic. So it's done in, you can do it in jars, in paper towel. And I was actually going to grow some in paper towel just to show what a pain it is mm -hmm. when you grow them in paper. Because people say, oh, I can just use them in paper towel. Because then the they root will go through and then you've got to peel them off. Sometimes you get bits of paper. Right. Uh, so it's really, it's really fiddly. If you're going to be eating, you know, the amount that you need to Handfuls. eat every day handfuls um, you really need a simple way to do it so a lot of people know about jars and you can go back and forth with the jar so this is just a, a mesh you could use cheesecloth yeah. or whatever attached with an elastic you uh, rinse your beans and then uh, pour out the water so you would have this at an angle but you can see um, I started this one yesterday and not all the beans are germinating some of them yeah, are let me hold this up in the camera sorry, we'll there get we go. Uh, yeah so some of them are germinating but not all of them because they, they, in a jar they don't necessarily all germinate evenly there's not enough air flow in here yes, you can see these ones here some of them here are a bit oh that's beautiful um, <laughs> yeah yeah so some of them uh, you know have started to germinate others have just kind of swollen but they haven't opened at all and you really want you uniform uh, sprouting so that your beans are all at the same level and that they've all germinated because if they don't they're really hard you're gonna break your tooth if you're using you know poor quality beans or you have a system that's not really designed for, for maximum um, sprouting. Okay, so the beans start, I'm going to, can I take sure. some of these out here, uh -huh. Kathy? So the beans start dry? Absolutely. Yeah, they're dormant right now. They're just waiting to be put in soil or put in water. And once you put them into one of those mediums, they come to life. They're biogenic, so they burst out of their shell. So you can see how tiny they are. I mean, they're, 
Yeah. These ones here, like they're they're smaller than peas, really. They're mm -hmm. tiny, tiny. Oops. And uh, Kathy's got here. I'll do this. There we go. And so there we go. So yeah. this hand here, my right hand, left hand on the camera, is just one day. Right. That's overnight. That's right. Overnight mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. sprouting. So they've they've really sorry they've really doubled in mm -hmm. size already. Yes, they're the fastest germinating. The mung beans are the fastest germinating. You know, so for, for 10 years, that's the only bean that I ever did. I never sprouted any other beans because why would I? This, was my, this is my health plan. Right. Um, when I started selling it, people asked me, what other beans can you sprout and whatnot? So that's when I started to experiment with different beans. Um, they're all delicious, but the fastest germinating are the, the mung beans. Okay, so there's the old school jar method. Jars. What is this? This one is really designed for the smaller beans. I use this one for smaller beans. It's got a little thing inside so your beans don't fall through. And this one you, you would soak your beans and then when you want to get the water out, there's holes in the bottom right. of, of the uh, container and you just spin it over the sink like a salad, like a salad spinner. spinner. Right, exactly. And then, um, so that's a different style. The challenge that I have with this one is it's hard to clean it. It's hard to keep clean at the bottom. There's like little corners, again, that things can, yep. can grow. So you really want to be careful not to have um, places where bacteria can grow and whatnot. And this is Tony. So the star of the show. The star of the show. Yes. So look at this. Super simple. Like I call a little it a, spaceship. It is like a little spaceship. <laughs> I call it the super simple sprouter because that's what it is. I, truly, I have the attention, attention span of a gnat. <laughs> so if I can do this for 12 years every day, um, it takes seven seconds, by the way, in the morning. You've timed it. I've timed it because people say, I don't have time. You don't have seven seconds for your health. This is our life. Yep. This is, we only have one. So food We're grade plastic. Cats. <laughs> we, that's right. Food grade plastic, stainless steel mesh. Uh, you put one to three tablespoons of the beans on. One table, or three tablespoons will yield about a cup of um, sprouts. Okay, so three tablespoons, that's it's going to, well, like we saw here, it's it's expand. expand. Mm -hmm. So this bag is a pound of mung beans. That's about a, a month's supply if you're doing it every day. That wow. will yield about... That's uh, it? That's it. I know. The that, whole month? That will yield about uh, eight cups of food. Amazing. So how this works, you put about a cup of water in the bottom. You want, you want the water touching but not covering. And then you place the dome on. And then you place it on the counter, light or dark. It doesn't matter. Anywhere. Anywhere. The important part is keeping the beans rinsed and clean. So if you start in the morning, before you go to bed that night, pour off the cloudy water, rinse the beans, replace the water, replace the dome. Simple. Simple. Back on the counter, you go to sleep. In the morning, your beans will be ready. Okay. It's so just one time you have to change the water. Right. And then, well, I would rinse it again in the morning. In you the can't morning, rinse right. too much, right? It's, why but not you're be just safe? rinsing it before you're eating just it, rinsing, really. Just rinsing, that's right. And then if you're not going to eat them when they're, um, you know, when the root is as long as the bean, then you would put it in the fridge, treat them like leftovers, and eat them within a couple of days. Okay. Uh, but just eat them. Like, don't, uh, don't, why bother putting it in the fridge? Just eat them. Right. It's going to so be good for you. You just pick them up and you eat them. So you eat them in the morning, you eat them, you can sprinkle them on your salad or yeah. yogurt or yes. whatever. Absolutely. So kind of like a berry it or like a, yes. like a cereal or a granola or something. Yeah, sort of like that or, or um, depending on the type of bean that you're sprouting, because I do also chickpeas and chickpeas are so delicious, right. um, nibbling on those is kind of like nibbling on peanuts, but yeah. super duper healthy. So like a, like a snack. Like a snack. You can just bring it to work or in a container and, and munch away. But you don't cook them. I don't cook them personally. You can. They're vegetables. They're just baby yep. vegetables. You certainly can. When you cook the sprouts or vegetables, you're destroying the enzymes. And the enzymes are what really pro helps our body process the food that we're taking in. Um, yeah, and that's what's missing in our, in our diet today. One of the main things. When we're born, we're given a certain number of digestive enzymes. And so when we're young, we can eat what we want, do what we want, and think we're infallible. Mm -hmm. As we start to age, we start to get it sick if we're not taking in, right. we're not eating sprouts. Right. Not me. Um, <laughs> um, because you're, when you're eating, you need the enzymes to process the food. So if, if you're not eating raw fruits and vegetables or sprouts, yep. the enzymes aren't there. And so your body's using the reserves that it was giving, given. So as we're aging... Then we start and we've yeah we've had so many uh, nutritionists and NDs here talking about how 
the center of our immune system is in our gut, and so our digestive health, health is so, so important. So This is a good, important. easy way to start. This is so simple, and not only that, you know, I, I mentioned raw fruits and vegetables, but the, but sprouts have about up to 10, 100 times more enzymes. Okay. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about all the different things you can sprout, and I think I'm going to do some sampling. That's what Kathy's got in store for me. Don't go anywhere. More in the know when we come back. Welcome back to In The Know. We are talking all about sprouting today on In The Know with Kathy Nesbitt, worm lady, sprout lady. <laughs> She's very, very talented, very earthy. You're like, you you know everything about the earth. Well, everything. I'm, you do. I still have stuff to learn. You are a wealthy. Thank you. You teach us so much every single time you're here. And Thank you make you it too, easy, yeah. which is what I really like because people are lazy. People don't get it. Um, but if it's easy and it's accessible and it's convenient and it's good for us, there's really no excuse. Why not? Exactly. And right? look at these beautiful samples. Are you hungry? Uh, <laughs> I'm always hungry, Kathy. Come on. I host a food show. Um, but you can sprout many different things. So you've, you've brought mung beans, which we've seen. We saw the little baby raw guys. Um, and then you brought them in the sprouters as well in various stages because the sprouts can be eaten at various stages. They sure can. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, so they're sprouts when they're just germinated. So these ones here, I don't know if we're... These ones yeah. I started yesterday morning. So 24 hours ready. You've got fresh, delicious food in 24 hours. How beautiful. And I think they even look delicious, but that's just me. <laughs> um, they do. They, you know what? They don't look unappetizing. Right. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I think they, they, you know, it's not something that you would see and be like, ooh, I don't want to eat that. Mm. It, they do look good. They don't look bad. Right, yeah. So as someone who eats food all the time, <laughs> I can tell you that honestly. But this is, uh, these are mung beans as well. These are also mung beans. These are four-day-old mung beans, and you can see they're starting to get their little leaves on them. So these are sprouts. Once they start to get taller, then they become microgreens or little plants, right? Um, baby plants rather than sprouts. So they're still nutritious. They have more uh, some uh, different elements because now they've got chlorophyll in them. Right, once you get the green leaves. Um, they ha changes the flavor, changes the nutritional value, so they're less nutritious than the newborns. Right. Um, but this is the, like the mung beans, or the uh, bean sprouts from Chinese food. Right. And you can actually make, I've used these uh, mung beans that I grow longer for pasta. So super duper healthy, again, imagine you just steam that a little bit and then add your some kind of sauce. And for those people who are on a gluten-free diet, oh my gosh, there's no perfect. gluten in here, no, no gluten, no dairy in here, right? Absolutely not. Delicious. Okay. Yeah. So for pennies a day, people can grow the sprouts right on their counter, so they save money if they're you know, you know taking a multivitamin. They're right. saving money growing the sprouts on their counter. Um, they know the freshness, so you know how fresh they are. Because you can buy sprouts at the grocery store or at different stores. Right. But you don't know how fresh they are, even though they have an expiry date. Mm -hmm. They never last as long as the ones that you grow. And you know, I know that I planted those yesterday, and look, they're ready today. Right. Right, I know how old they are. So we saw the, the dried form. Where do you buy the dried uh, beans like From this? From me. From you. Tony and I buy them by the ton. Okay. <laughs> it's a hill of beans. <laughs> Perfect. But we don't spill the beans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're too funny. <laughs> Thank you. You sell all different types or just uh, We're just selling the mung beans at Kay. the moment, yeah. So if someone wants to do the, the a whole variety, like an organic supermarket or right. like that? Right, so in York Region we've got Nature's Emporium, Ambrosia, there's Planet Organic, yep. Organic Garage, I, do, I don't know them all, yeah. but Noah's, I mean there's Big Carrot, there's, there's tons right. of, of places and even some of the larger grocery stores are now carrying the organic beans and I would suggest going with organic versus um, traditional yeah for the uh, lack of Un a better organic, word yeah, yeah. Um, just because the cost different for the beans is is nominal right and it's your health so you're not exposed to any extra chemicals that might be on the beans okay mm -hmm. so we'll just go through from this side here I'll, I'll try and hold them up so this is uh, these both are of these actually yeah those are green lentils and blue lentils 
So all the lentils you can do, brown, red, green, blue, I mean all the different lentils can be grown in the system. They take a little bit longer than the mung beans, but you don't need to soak them. Okay. I often get the question, how long do you need to soak the beans? And you don't need to soak chickpeas, lentils, the mung beans, nothing needs to be soaked prior. I would say just give them a quick rinse because even if they're organic, people have handled them. Okay, and so this is, I'm just, I'm thinking as you're talking here, I'll do this, just chickpeas. No, I, I chickpeas said I haven't garbanzo. seen, yeah, I said I hadn't um, cooked them, but I, I do cook the beans sometimes, <laughs> so it's like I lied earlier, yeah. I didn't. Um, I made actually falafel. Imagine yeah. making falafel, okay, so if you make it with uh, canned chickpeas, imagine now using your dry beans, sprouting them, and then making falafel. Or making your hummus out of the sprouted chickpeas. There's, well, know, that's what I was thinking. My, my brain was circulating because hummus is not cooked. It's not cooked. That's right. Right. So you can take all of the, the great nutrients that are in the sprouted garbanzo and make it into hummus. Absolutely. And then it, you're adding, again, that additional level of health mm -hmm. rather than just using you know, the canned ones. That so was good. I like that. And crunchy. So imagine munching on chickpeas or lentils rather than chips or right. anything any other of the junk food yeah. um, category these are super healthy okay and you, and you can't od on them <laughs> <laughs> this here these are, Those beans are the again? Beans. yes go for it delicious Look at that. oh so my gosh that up there so beautiful we're gonna get it there we go woohoo looks good wow. there wow beautiful Look and then that. the one on the end, maybe you want to just tilt that. Uh, just tilt that, yeah. yeah. Just hold it so right this there. So uh, these are fenugreek uh, seeds. And fenugreek is used a lot in Middle Eastern cooking and mm -hmm. Asian cooking. So it has a bit of a bitter taste. You like them or you don't. It, not everybody likes the, mung be or the uh, fenugreek raw mm -hmm. as they are. They like them in their cooking or in the salads. So imagine having a whole sprout salad. I mean, the kind of things, are we done? There we go. So the kind of things that you can do with your sprouts, obviously you can add them into your salads, yeah. nibble on them as we've talked about. You can add them into your cooked food, even though you can cook them, right. um, as a garnish. Right. I do put them in soups and stews. But it is really easy to... The mu I've never had mung beans. Oh. So very good. I welcome. like them. They're um, mild, sweet. Juicy. Juicy. Yeah, definitely refreshing. And I was going to mention with the fenugreek, a lot of new moms will take a fenugreek supplement to increase their breast milk supply. Right. Yeah, right. Because it's perfect for, for uh, breast milk. So health. you can yes. make those really easily as well. Interesting. Uh, again, you're saving money, right? If you're buying sprouts, they, they are quite costly to buy, you know, sprouted sprouts. For sure. So if you're buying beans, pennies, so for pennies a day, you can nourish your family. Lentils. I like lentils, and you can probably add these to a soup. Keep them raw, but just kind of add them to get them warmed up. Yes, you can. Yes. And, uh... You can add them into your smoothies, mm -hmm. into your juices, so you get the juice, you get the benefit of the, the sprouted beans in, cool. in all of your deliciousness. All right. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to meet Tony. We're going to learn all about his invention, and he's a wealth of information. I've talked to him for just a few minutes. We're going to get the goods out of Tony when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to In The Know. We are talking all about sprouting today. Kathy Nesbitt is our special guest, but we have another special guest. Tony Hornick is here. You are the inventor of the, what did you call it? The Super Simple Sprout Crow. Super Simple Sprout Crow. <laughs> is that what you call it, Tony? Not, not originally. <laughs> not originally. How did you get into this? Welcome to In The Know. 48 years ago, I, uh, I became very ill, and uh, after reading about uh, sprouting in jars, uh, which has been written in many books throughout the world, by the way. I started to eat them uh, at the time, that's 48 years ago, uh, on a daily basis. Not just once a week or once a month, but every day mm -hmm. because of my illness. I wanted to be cured. And uh, so I started to eat them. And the first three years, I found out that what I was eating was a little bit poisonous. So I then sold the, I stopped 
growing them in jars and bought a glass unit which wasn't perfect but uh, and very expensive uh, and used that up till the age of 70. I'm now 85. And, and you uh, don't look it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't feel it. Good. So uh, you, like really, you recreated it at 70. At 70, I came in and taught myself how to do websites and at the same time decided I was going to produce a system that, ha that is fast, simple, and non-poisonous. Nine out of ten uh, uh, sprouters that are on the market are poisonous. And I could explain that if you want mm -hmm. me to. You know I'm going to ask you. Well, <laughs> uh, I can explain it. Uh, it's, it's not an easy uh, answer for that, but I can uh, argue that. I'm given in many meetings of, of 10 to 56, the largest group I've had, and I would be given in an hour to talk about this, not five or ten minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to make it very quick for you. Um, see, uh, when a baby is born um, to a human, the mother has the baby and after birth comes out with the baby. And the uh, nurse meets the baby to there's no uh, contaminants. And the baby, it licks or eats the afterbirth and licks off the baby to make sure it doesn't get mold or bacteria growth. Mm -hmm. But when you grow a plant, a uh, baby from um, uh, in a system, if you don't have a way of washing it and cleaning it, then you're obviously going to get contaminants. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to get mold or bacteria. And that's how nine or uh, out of ten units systems work. They don't regard the uh, afterbirth as important and yet that is what causes the growth of bacteria and mold. So anytime you have uh, seeds on top of other seeds which are mothers having babies, right. the afterbirth falls through from the top seed into the second seed. So you have a mixture of, of contaminants mm -hmm. afterbirth from one to the other, correct? Soaked up by the babies below. Our system avoids that. It's one single layer. Right, which is why on top and, of the screen. And then it, as Kathy was saying, so your liquid is, is so underneath. Your, your afterbirth falls through the screen into the water. And it's amazing. Uh, uh, after 12 hours after you start, which is if you put the seeds in tonight, and that's always the best time, putting them in, in the evening, because mothers want to have their babies at <laughs> night time. That's true. They grow better. So the next morning, 12 hours later, you lift the screen up and you, the water will all be colored. That's the afterbirth that's come out in the water. And if you slid your fingers around that uh, dish at the bottom, you'd find it's all slippery. That's the afterbirth. Well, I mean. mm -hmm. So what you have to do is lift that screen out, wash the seeds, to dump out that water, replace right. it with clean water, but wash the unit too. That's always wise. Right. And you then start with fresh for the next 12 hours, which is a total of 24, to grow the sprout, which becomes edible in 24 to 30 hours. And it's different be depending on the temperature of the water and the lighting. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's light or dark, they grow automatically anyway, sometimes two or three hours more or less. Okay. But it's uh, a very simple, fast, clean system. That's what's important. And I start off with 100 to 150 multivitamin pills every morning before <laughs> breakfast to get my enzyme factor. Then I eat my uh, acidic food if I want because I've eaten my alkaline food. Right. I, I've raised my pH to the, what it should be. And the water I drink is always 7.0 water or 7.5, somewhere in there because your body uh, needs the same value of water that God in nature gave us in rain, which is 6.9 to 7.1, mm -hmm. correct? So that's the kind of water that I drink every day. Very important. Okay. And so almost 50 years, do you sprout all of these vegetables? No, I only, 
There's no <laughs> difference between babies born. Any seed in any bean, even a chrysanthemum seed, has exactly the same value at birth as, the, as this seed here. Uh, it doesn't matter what you grow. Oh, okay. All seeds and beans are identical at birth. It's the day or two after when the genetics take over right. and the baby says, I want to look like mom and dad. Yeah. So if this is a cucumber seed, obviously that baby wants to look like a cucumber, not like a, a neck plant. Right. Correct? So it, it, uh, at, at birth, it's, it's going to be identical in value. After birth, genetics have taken over to change the values to what the mother and father have. And that's what's happening here with the mung beans that... Exactly. They're, mm -hmm. they're of less value, here. the plant. In other words, after two or three days, it becomes a plant. All which right. is what's happened there. Okay, we have to take a short break, Tony. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the health benefits and nutrition of sprouting. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to In the Know. I'm Julia Supa. We are talking all about sprouting today and DIY sprouting, really. It's do-it-yourself sprouting. You're doing it at home. And you both tell me that it's healthy and it's good for you and it's easy. <laughs> it's alkaline, alkalinizing, which you've mentioned. But why is it so good for you, Tony? You, you mentioned your health issues beforehand. You're healthy now, 84 years young. That's right. Looking great. Why is this so good for us? There's nothing missing in it. Not, not a single nutrient is missing because God and nature does not miss anything. It's only we that miss things. And that's why it's important that we eat what God and nature gave us. The, the uh, seed and bean born to a mother. And these mothers are the first mothers in the world that started all of us to grow started to, to grow the animals and the plants, which all came from green, from green seed mothers. So common sense has to tell us that that is what we should be eating as a major source of nutrition. All the enzymes, all the proteins, all the vitamins, most of the minerals have their beginning there. That's where life begins. Mm -hmm. And so we want, to, we want to eat that fundamental food which happens to be the least expensive food in the, in the world as well. In, in uh, India, I've been told that the farmers get from one penny to five cents a pound for mung beans in bulk. One pound gives you one month of vegetables. Think of it. One month of vegetables for five cents? Yeah. Organic vegetables <laughs> for five cents for one month? That's what's available in the world, but most people aren't even aware of it. And there's not a single nutritional factor missing from that month's in, uh, intake. So it's you mentioned there. people aren't aware of it. Is it just because it's not talked about? Or? Education. Okay. Well, oh, and that's education. why we're here. We're in the know. We're trying to be knowledgeable. <laughs> You're here to share your knowledge with us. So it's, it's really just getting the word out to people, teaching yeah. people. Normally, I speak for one hour at a uh, speaking engagement, and I've sp spoken to groups of 10 to 150 people. Even one church had me in to speak to their parishioners to explain what God and nature has available naturally for all of them as the most important food that they could, they could be eating and the least expensive. Uh, and I'm given an hour for that rather than 10 or 15 <laughs> minutes. So it's a very exciting for me to be able to uh, convey my message to others after learning and eating and being involved with this program for 48 years. It's a long time. Right. And most people don't do that. They have baby sprouts once a week because uh, there's so much trouble in a jar. And of course, every book in the world teaches you to start in a jar, and yet it's poisonous. Right. 
why do they uh, why is that copied from one book to another and there are scientists that do that I could tell you a story about that as well separately okay why that happens sure but, so Kathy have you I mean I'm sure you've done extensive research as you do with everything have you taken these sprouts to uh, a naturopathic doctor or to a nutritionist or anything have you gotten their kind of say on the nutritional value of the sprout? I haven't, but I've done all kinds of research, especially, I mean, when I started, I, w I just went on Tony's Say So, and I really was using them blind. I would look at Tony and said, okay, I'd look at him, he looks yep. so vibrant and beautiful, I'm going to do this. So I felt great, but when I started selling it, people wanted to know what's so great about right. them. And so, as I said, vitamins A to Z, hydrating, alkalizing, regenerative, biogenic, a digestive enzyme, complete protein, everything is there. Plant estrogens, what, which helps to bone formation and to reduces osteoporosis. Um, regenerative means cell growth rather than Alzheimer's is degenerative. Mm -hmm. So they're just like so super duper healthy. It's unbelievable. There's um, antioxidants which right. help fight cancer, and it's it, they're superfoods. Right. Yeah. So is there? <laughs> this is going to sound <laughs> funny, but is there an ideal? customer for the sprout because it does seem like women uh, towards maybe a middle age would be most beneficial of these sprouts because of the alkalinizing factor preventing uh, osteoporosis yeah yeah all of those things so older folks for sure but imagine if we got everybody yep. starting at a young age everybody just eating sprouts as a natural thing you know I do a lot of school workshops with my worms yep. now I'm introducing the sprouter into schools and that, so the kids plant the seeds one day they and then the next day they have you know kinda looks like popcorn mm -hmm. and then they're able to eat that for their snack so imagine if all the students were eating sprouts instead of eating cheese strings or right. whatever other kind of stuff that right. they're eating yeah, and I mean, like like we've all said, it's it's just a vegetable, right? So it's not just, but it is a vegetable. So I could give it to my two-year-old because there's there's beans. nothing nothing harmful. It's not manipulated Animals at love all. It. Yeah, birds love them. Right. Yeah. Believe uh, me. You know, I yeah. talk about this as a a thrival food. Like it's super healthy. It's going to make you feel good. It's also a survival food. If something happens and we have a global crisis, mm -hmm. I hope not. If you've got a bag of sprouts, a bag of beans, and some fresh water, you've got food for your family right. overnight. It's, it's really, really important. It's, it's so simple, so affordable, and everybody can do this. And so in terms of storage, because I know you have tons and tons of, <laughs> literally tons of beans. beans. Um, not in your damp basement. Not in your damp basement. No, you want to keep it in a dry, um, like a dry dark container, place. container? Or right. Yeah, so we sell them in, um, I think they, they're, it's, you said 25 pounds. 25 and 55 pound bags. So okay. I, su I suggest to all of my friends and family mm -hmm. that you get a bag, a 50, I sell them by 55 pounds. I don't have the 25 pounds yet. <laughs> um, and, and have that, and everybody have a bag of beans, but make sure that your neighbors have a bag of beans too, because if there is a crisis, <laughs> then your, your neighbors are going to be right. coming looking for your beans. But in terms, <laughs> of, in terms of in your house, you, in a drawer, a dark drawer is fine? Yeah. Or sure. Anywhere. Any full place cellar, where it's dry. anywhere Any. where it's dry. Anywhere That's where right. it's dry and dark, because I notice when I leave them in the car, they actually get sun bleached, so they right. kind of turn, start getting lighter okay, in color. Okay, because that's important. You don't want to ruin your no, of course your not. seeds before you have to go to uh, process them. Okay. But they found seeds. The seeds will last for a long time. They found seeds in King Tut's tomb. So they were like two or three thousand years old. Well, and they still were viable. Long. They still grew. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We have to take a short break. Thanks so much, Tony, for joining us. When we come back, we are going to talk more with Kathy about kids and fundraising and schools and how to get the sprouts into the school system. Don't go anywhere more in the know when we come back. Welcome back to In the Know. It's been a really informative show. We're talking all about sprouting today, and Kathy Nesbitt has been our special guest. And we did meet Tony earlier in the show. 
So you do a lot of fundraising and a lot of uh, festival work, and you go to schools, and you're you're kind of everywhere, and you, <laughs> you teach people. And I, I'm serious because you taught me so much about worms. I still don't do the worm thing, but I not I, yet. <laughs> I do appreciate what you do, and, Thank and you. so you you teach kids of all ages as well as adults like me about how um, the worm culture um, can benefit you and us. But now you're doing the same for your sprouting. And, you know, you know, on that vein, yes, thank you. And thank you for your kind words about my work. Um, when I, I, I know with my worm business that w I have world hunger solved. Right. And I, I've known that for a long time. Worms were amending the soil. When I met Tony in 2002 uh, and he told me about the sprouts and the benefit of the sprouts, I said, hmm, maybe worms and sprouts are going to solve world hunger. Mm. Right? Worms for amending the soil, yeah. sprouts for eating. And I forgot all about it. And I'd see Tony, I'd beat my sprouts, doing my worms. And when he approached me in 2012 and asked me if I wanted to sell the sprouter, I really got goosebumps. And I said, oh my gosh, Tony, remember when we met 10 years ago? Um, and, you sa and I said, worms and sprouts, we're going to solve world hunger. Mm -hmm. And now I'm selling worms and sprouts. It really feels like the, the last kind of piece that I needed for the complete puzzle um, of, of, of doing this. And I feel the same with the sprouts as I do with the worms that this is something valuable information that everybody needs it's mm -hmm. so simple just like the worms very simple nature provided them for us millions of years ago mm -hmm. it's not rocket science right it's earth science yeah <laughs> or nutrition science yep. um, yeah so this is really the same idea going into schools and 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 I do a lot of festivals and I love when people come up I give them the pitch about the sprouts and when I ask them do you want to try them when the when the little children when they eat the sprouts and they go oh those are really good, I'm amazed when people don't say I I, I okay I'll, let's get one of those right you know it's, because we're talking so how much does one of these cost twenty five dollars okay yeah, twenty five dollars twenty five thousand dollars exactly <laughs> it's it's really an impulse buy yeah, it's, it's like not oh an my gosh. it's not even an investment piece money wise it is but not. it is an investment on in your health absolutely and and time it takes seconds really I've I've timed it seven seconds in the morning seven seconds at night and boom you've got your food you know and and so in schools they can grow those right in the classroom For sure and they can have like what what happens with the worms is they have one or two students assigned to looking after the worms that week same with the sprouts they could not week every day yeah. somebody would do that plant the seeds and then somebody rinse them before they go home at the end of the day and it's a beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. thing because then they're eating healthy some some kids don't don't eat vegetables, so this is a way for them a lot to of get kids, some I would think. right for them to get some nutrients in. It's a beautiful a beautiful program. And so we were talking in the break because you know my mind is always going when it comes to food, ways that you can season these and and mm. to appeal to a whole wide variety of people. So you know you can add spices, you can add herbs, you can you know without oil cooking and vinegar them so much and oil and vinegar right. making a salad. Mm. Um, so many things. Garlic yeah. powder and sesame seed salt. So you roast yeah. your sesame seeds, mix it with salt, blend it or grind it up in your coffee grinder, and then sprinkle that on. Right. Then you kind of have a s salty. Well, then it's like chips. <laughs> then it, it kind of is, but not the not the really. Fry. Yeah. yeah, not really at all. No oil and yeah. So there's so many things to do. People just need to eat these. It's so simple. Okay. And what have kids said? Because, you know comes out of the the mouths of babes right kids say the darndest things what do kids say about the sprouts they love them for the most part they generally love them like some of them are maybe a little bit maybe yeah. bitter or whatever but the mung beans are just so delicious simply i find i find kind of in and i actually add them to mm. things myself <laughs> um they don't add eggs to it right away i feel about a little dish of ice you right. know not but the fried with spread of my yeah so oh, what's the challenge that you know not getting right there spreading challenge you about sprouting about sprouting the challenge is that we have you know, and there's so many mixtures you know you talked about the bully and you know the sprouting right problem before that's what people remember it's user error. If you're using like Tony's sprouter, you pour off, you rinse. I mean, there's no mm -hmm. there's no corners for toxins to grow. It's the system and the user. That's that's where the issue comes in. So it's it's really being diligent because it is for our health. Right. We spend more attention on so many external things, but we don't think about our health. This is our vessel. This is our body that gets us through. Um, our life right mm hmm okay so advice for people at home who are 
watching the show, thinking, okay, looks easy, sounds easy. What do they have to do? All they have to do is uh, go to my website, uh, kathysproders.com or, or to tonysprogrowers.com and read all about, I mean, I've got all kinds of testimonials, video testimonials of people that are doing it. I have friends that have digestive is issues, Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis. When I introduced them to Sprouts and the Sprouter, they were so grateful because they couldn't find a snack that w wouldn't kind of bugger up their mm -hmm. digestive system and satisfy them at the same time. You can eat sprouts until the cows come home. Right. Why would you do that? I don't know. It's a strange expression. But everyone's told <laughs> to eat legumes, more legumes, more legumes, and that's exactly what you're this doing. This is so simple. It, I, you know, maybe it's too simple. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the challenge is it's like, oh, how good could that What's be? It's so catch? simple. <laughs> What's the catch? That's right. This is something pe everybody can do, and this makes a really great gift for family and friends, but leave the enemies out. Cause yeah. <laughs> All right, Kathy, that's <laughs> awesome, and I really thank, thank you for you. coming, and I thank Tony for coming as well, um, because I do believe that knowledge is half the battle, and you, you have to get people aware and understanding, and then once they figure out that it is easy, then they tell other people. Knowledge is power, but it's the action yeah. that's really the power. Yeah, okay, and I want to remind everyone at home, SproGrowers.com is Tony's website, and he does have a call to action up there at the top of the page for any educational institution post-secondary as well as any hospital. He's willing to donate uh, Sprout Growers to them if they're going to take on this challenge. More information at SproutGrowers.com. Thanks to everyone at home for watching. Thanks to you, Kathy, for being Thank an outstanding you. guest as always. We'll see you here next time on In the Know. Rogers TV viewer.